What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So in this video, I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of the entire market right now and where we are currently at the moment in terms of valuations and talk a little bit about the technical analysis and the yields as well because last week's rally was very much regarded to treasury yields. Treasuries dropping lower and as a result, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the tech stocks rallying pretty aggressively. So as always, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. I've been adding a lot of really valuable spreadsheets uh, for all the members to access. Um, so to give you an example, this right here are our MoneyVest VIX cheat sheet, right? So we've talked about this and this is going to be the current read. It's going to update automatically and it's going to give you very, very nice, useful data for where the volatility is, what the implied volatility looks like and what percentile we're currently in. So you can consider this as kind of like a dashboard because this is something that we are building right now. So these are all MoneyVest spreadsheets and there's going to be more and more tabs built at the very top. So you can simply click on each tab and go to different sets of data. So for example, you can click on NASDAQ 200 SMA and you can then again figure out what's the current read. Everything will be updated automatically so you don't have to do anything and the percentile is going to be updated as well and this is the previous percentiles observations and then we've also added the S&P 500 valuation which is exactly what I'm going to go over in this video which is this right here and right now the data is loading uh, so right now you can see that there's a lot of loadings because uh, this is again updated automatically the market just opened so I want to go over that in over here which I've already plugged in the data for and there's also the MoneyVest intrinsic value spreadsheet which is also going to be added eventually once everything is updated. Uh, it's going to have real-time stocks and the intrinsic values over here and the percentage change needed and the risks associated with each company. So you can very quickly glance and of course take a look at all these intrinsic values over here for individual stocks. There's a lot of really, really exciting stuff that we're building. And there's going to be more tabs. I promise there's going to be a lot more tabs because I've got so many ideas to include for the data that's available out there. So we're going to include that in our analysis. But anyway, so today's video is going to be on the valuation overall. I want to run through this analysis and give you a little bit of an insight into where the markets are. So you can already start to see that we are running up to a wall right now. S&P 500 only at 15 basis points. And the NASDAQ at the moment is also coming up to that resistance and up over 36 to 37 basis points. So we talked about this over the weekend. I mentioned this, that this is going to be a very, very big technical week for the market. And that's exactly the reason why it's important that this week on Friday, if we are above 13,700 on the NASDAQ, then there is possibility that the following week, which is again, inflation week next week, um, is going to be potentially stronger on the back of maybe a better print on inflation. But if we get rejected here, and that's the incredible resistance that we're coming up to over here for the NASDAQ and S&P 500 also literally inside this red rectangle right now, which is an area of resistance at 4,400. Uh, if you get rejected, then there is a possibility for us to maybe see some more potential downside. In other words, this is where the bears and the bulls come together to fight it out. That's what it's going to be. It's, they're just fighting it out. This is the battle that we talked about over the weekend. We're going to find out on Friday when I do the market updates who ends up winning this battle, whether it's going to be the bulls or the bears. Let, let me know in the comment section down below what you think. And a lot of that technicality is going to actually end up on the hands of the 10-year treasuries, right? So if this week actually ends up being very positive for the 10-year yield, which right now it does seem like it is, it's up over 1.2%. Um, if you do see some more momentum this week, then it's possible the markets find it very challenging to break out of those resistance levels. So for example, last week, we had a very nice decline of over 5.5% on the 10-year treasuries. And this week, we're already starting off with a gain. And that's why it's, you know, the markets are starting to kind of fade that momentum a little bit. And we're not seeing a very significant move to the upside for the NASDAQ or the S&P. And in fact, big tech, we do have Tesla, NVIDIA still rallying a little bit higher. Netflix, AMD are struggling right now. And uh, the FANG stock index is up over 90 basis points. So there is a lot of momentum that is still there. But again, at the end of the day, it's really going to come down to whether we can break out of this lower high and lower low pattern and continue on this upward trajectory. Now, talking more fundamentally, a little bit more on the valuation side. If you take a look at where the S&P is, 4366, we want to make sure that this is updated automatically. 4363, so this again will be updated automatically because there is a Google Finance um, formula in there already. Let me see if I can reload this and if it works now or if it's still going to be loading. 
uh, because the data here is 20 minutes delayed on the S&P. There we go. Now we now we have this data. So again, you can access this, you know, through the links down uh, in the below. You can join our Patreon and I'll share the links uh, in our Discord. But the current read is 4,366, right? The er earnings estimates EPS is 225 for this year. That means the P multiple right now for 2023 is just a little bit over 19.4. Now, 19.4 is actually quite reasonable uh, in my opinion. Now, I've mentioned that I would be a lot more comfortable at 4,000, right? So 4,000 is my intrinsic value for uh, for S&P 500. That means just a little bit under 7% potential decline needed for the S&P to be trading down to as low as 4,066. And that's going to be about 300 points lower than where it's trading at the moment. Now, if you come across, and this is really what that sensitivity grid shows us, it shows us the valuation. So it gives you a little bit of a bird's eye view of where the S&P 500's valuation is going to be at different prices and at different EPS estimates. So at 4,000, in other words, just under 7% decline at 4,000, it's gonna put us at roughly around 18 times price earnings multiple on a 2023 basis. Now, 18, if you take a look, 18.07 is going to be in line with that 15-year average for the S&P 500. And the 10-year average is 18.4, five-year average is 21, and then 25-year average is just over 19.75. So yes, one could argue that S&P 500 right now, today, as they are valued as an aggregate index, they are somewhat cheaper compared to its 25-year average and their five-year average, but they are still a little bit, slightly more on the expensive side considering the 10-year average and the 15-year average. And also, I want to point out that given how high the yields are, if you take the reciprocal of this earnings per share, the P multiple 19.41, so if you do 1 divided by 19.41, we're looking at a 5.1% earnings yield. Earnings yield meaning that's how much the earnings are generated relative to the price that it's trading at. So 5.1% right now is comparable to that of treasuries, right? We learned from Berkshire Hathaway, from Warren Buffett, and how much they have invested in US treasuries because of the higher rate of return that they can actually achieve. So on a risk-adjusted basis, given how diminished the premiums are, even 19.41, one could actually argue that it's actually expensive at the moment, given how high the yields are. So for that very reason, of course, you want to get down to this bottom right quadrant, which is lower multiples and lower actual earnings uh, multiples. So 16, 15, 14 are going to be ideal in a high interest rate environment. But the markets, of course, are very much on the back of these technology stocks still trading at which I would argue somewhat of an expensive valuation at the moment. So bottom line is, if, if 225 ends up being the actual EPS for 2023, uh, we're looking at a 19.4 where earnings per share, that's multiple, that's where we're trading at the moment. I would be a lot more comfortable anything that's 18 or lower. Of course, the lower the better because that eventually leads to lower risk because as prices come down, risk comes down. And right now, we're right here at these levels. So I don't mind dollar cost averaging into VUG or SMH, for example, but from a straight up valuation standpoint and looking at a lot of these individual stocks, like for example, Tesla, overvalued, Amazon, overvalued, NVIDIA, overvalued, Microsoft, overvalued. So there's a lot of companies that are trading way above their intrinsic values at the moment on aggregate, which obviously is being reflected in the S&P 500 as a whole at the moment as well. So so that's where we are right now. And, and especially given how high the yields are, there's better risk adjusted opportunities for a lot of investors. Um, and for that very reason, fundamentally speaking, uh, you know, it could be difficult for the markets to break out. But of course, technically, a lot of that is going to depend on where the yields end up going. So so that's where we are. That's going to be that resistance. That, that's going to be that lower high to watch very, very carefully. Um, and again, if you want to get access to all these spreadsheets, there's going to be a lot more tabs where you can you know access different sets of data. This is going to be, again, volatility. This is going to be the S&P 5 Nasdaq 200 SMA trading above below. Um, very, very good sort of percentiles and where we are good technical trading opportunities for when we obviously do dip below the one percentile or lower levels for um, for the Nasdaq stocks. And this right here, again, are going to be all the uh, intrinsic values for our stocks that we have on our watch list. So again, link's going to be down below if you are interested in joining and getting access to all of this. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Happy investing, and I'll see you all in the next video.